been gone for three years and I had tears in my eyes twice from Alan and Jamie's song. Unbelievable. All I have to say is wow with that. Um, somebody told me this meal was going to cost $15. Well, I think he got $15 from Jacob's speech. He should be the preacher. Um, Charlie's talking about somebody on his staff going on vacation. Charlie's been on vacation his whole life. <laughs> It's, it's great to be back, uh, even if it's a short time. And uh, I'm going to be a little bit more real uh, of some things that uh, I believe people should do. I haven't cried for three years, folks. Three years. So give me that. Uh, we sit out here, and I counted up. I think there was 96 people out here. How many people in Howard County sent their children to school hungry? So I challenge each and every one of you to give back to this community. It's been very good to me. I'm going to get off my soapbox here in a minute, I promise you. But I, I challenge each of you in the next week to give up $5 to, to the food pantry. We talk about world hunger. We talk about everything outside of the United States. We need to take our own folks first. I believe in that. Uh, we have the people out here in Howard County that serve, that they protect us. How many times do we walk past them on a, on a given day and we forget to say thank you? That's also serving, also giving back. Uh, serving and giving is kind, kind of like a grandparent, if you think about it. Those of you who are grandparents, those of you who are grand, grandchildren, grandparents are the last one to go through the lines. They're the last ones to open up a Christmas gift. That's who we need to be. That's the vision of Jesus Christ. I believe in, in destiny, and I believe in kindness, and there is a, I believe I'm, the reason why I'm back here today, and I need to thank Jay, the athletic department, Fred. I know it's been a dream of him to have a prayer breakfast here, Sherry, and everyone else. Uh, I left three years ago and was able to hire a great man for the football position. But I also had a friend on campus that was an assistant coach at the time when we were hiring Alan. And he interviewed for the job. His name was Bob Grammer. I haven't spoken to Bob for almost four years. I got a call two days ago from Bob. And he was wanting a reference. And I think everybody knows how I am. He asked me if I could give him a reference. I said, absolutely. You have to forgive and you have to forget. That's also serving. I don't think if you can't take care of yourself, you can't be the person that you need to be to give back. The students, what you are doing here at Central Methodist, I'm so proud to say I'm an alum from Central Methodist. Uh, I'm, I'm going to challenge the athletic department, the university, and fresh ideas. I was able to, to go to another institution, and we partner with our food service on a unique product. We're, we're called the Havelinas. And I didn't wear any, I didn't wear any hat on you know my policy, if you're out on Central's campus, you better be wearing Central. And I know somebody out here has, has Missouri on, so you better take that, take that vest off. But, but I challenge the university and fresh ideas, and maybe Scythe could pull this off, of coming up with a unique food product that you would sell down in the snack bar, and a percentage of the proceeds would go back to the food pantry. We were, we were able to raise over $8,000 off of a product we called the Hog Dog. And it was so spicy, you only ate it one time. <laughs> um, God is good. And as you go through your life, things change. There's callings for you. I thought I was supposed to go down to Texas A&M University and be the athletic director. Soon to come to find out that wasn't our goal. My wife, she teaches in schools, and in that community, it's a very diverse community. I'm the minority down there. We're about 69% Hispanic. 
You have three tiers of people in the community. You have millionaires, you have upper middle class, and basically you have poverty. Then my eyes, my eyes were wide open. The first thing that we decided to do is get involved within, within the community. My wife sits on two boards. One is uh, a child abuse, and the other one is battered women. I sit on eight different boards and I give back to the community. Uh, I have to fly out here at three o'clock uh, or leave here at three o'clock so I can get back because we are serving spaghetti uh, to the needy people in Kingsville. I stand up here today to tell each and every one of you to make time to give back. You can do it. There's 24 hours in the day and you don't need eight hours of sleep, I promise you. You can give back to the community. How many of you go to a restaurant and you see somebody sitting at the table and you sit somewhere else? I'm guilty of that. I made a commitment to myself when I was down there by myself for the first seven months without my family. I went to McDonald's every morning. Find out where the people sit. People that need help also are those who are wealthy as well. Those people who are wealthy can also help the people in poverty. <clears throat> Just not the people that's poor. Some people can give money, other people can give themselves. How many times do you think about who's not eating when you're having steak and shrimp at a restaurant? Have you ever went a week of giving up something? Most of you probably have. Try going a week and just drink water. We have a young man down in Kingsville. Not young man, I guess. He's an older man. Everybody knows, everybody knows him. His wife and his daughter, from what I know, were killed in a car accident. This man has two master's degrees. Was very involved in the community and he's lived on the streets for the last 10 years. And when you walk by him, you know it. He smells. It is an alcohol problem. Two years ago, we were in the NCAA playoffs and we decided it was over Thanksgiving break and our uh, football team came up and they said, they wanted to host a community dinner, community luncheon. Jamie, everybody here, Dr. Henry, be proud of us in the Methodist Church from a public institution going to the Methodist. They collected money that day as they came through and they gave that individual enough. Well, they didn't give the money. They went to a motel so he could bathe, sleep in a warm bed for almost 15 days. And some people said, well, why are we doing that? He's going to be back out on the street. You never know. You've got to give people an opportunity to change. That's what Jesus Christ does. I'm up here to tell you I am not perfect by any means whatsoever. But if you give people an opportunity to change, it's in their hands. As you continue to go through life, men and women of Central Methodist, this institution will do so many things for you in life. Embrace the philosophy, embrace the mission of this institution. Because as I told you, I'm very proud of this institution. I've been associated with 15 years, and when Fred called me and asked me to come back, I really didn't have time, but I made time. So as you go through life, give back to this institution as well. Be very thankful for your parents. Somebody came up to me a while ago and they thought Bill was my father. Well, Bill is my second father. Bill is very selfish. He'll give things off his back to people. My father's the same way. If we can continue to give back, this community will be better. If we have 342 people that are hungry, 
That's amazing. How many people in the world are hungry? I challenge you not to be a talker. I challenge you to be a doer. A lot of people want to be in all these civic groups. They want to go to the, dead, the luncheons. They want to have their names on the bulletins. Rotarians are the world's worst. I went down there. I can remember Dr. Emman and Don Cullimore and Larry Anderson tried to get me to be a Rotarian all the years I was here, and I go down there and become a Rotarian. First, <laughs> first thing I tell them, I say, you're lazy. They want to open up their checkbooks. They don't want to do. So we get them involved. So, actions speak a lot louder than words. Um, I encourage you to be a part of the solution and not a problem. If you see things around the community that you want to change, make an initiative. Put it together. Let it happen. One of my, one of my biggest pet peeves in, in Kingsville, people are lazy. They're overweight. They don't even push the Walmart shopping carts back into the container. <laughs> so what do we do in the athletic department? My student athletes were so mad at me. They had these trash bags flying around. It's, the wind blows 100 miles an hour. We picked up trash bags, so those uh, Walmart trash bags, and also pushed shopping carts back into those cages for three hours. But what, what I go on and say is with the things that you learn from this community in Fayette, the students, I'm talking to you guys, when you graduate, be the leaders in your community. Make sure that you instill the importance of giving back. Giving also has to be for yourself. I'm going to steer to the men and women who serve this county and also this community. You have to serve yourself as well. You need to take time for yourself. That's one thing that was very challenging for me in my early years of, of administration. I came in late last night. My father-in-law picked me up. I went to bed for three hours. I was up at two o'clock. That's my time. Because if I don't get my work done, I'm not a happy camper. And if you don't take care of yourself, you come to work, you treat other people the way you don't want to be treated. Those of you who know me, I always say try to treat people better than what, the way you want to be treated. I also believe that there is no tomorrow. <clears throat> All of us have had family members, friends who have passed away. I feel very fortunate to have the experience that I had here at Central Methodist going down to Kingsville. We had two deaths right before Christmas. And it was my experience back here with the men and women that we're honoring today that helped me get through those two deaths with those families. So you never know what's going to take place. You don't have to be the person that stands up and, and preaches. Um, Lord knows that I had to change coming from a <coughs> private institution going to a public institution. I used to like to listen to my Christian rock music, but I did offend some people in my office. So I just turned it up a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to give back some more. One of the things that I'm very proud of, and I don't know if they have this in, in, in Howard County, I'm sure they do in, in uh, Boone County, is the Boys and Girls Club. Um, what a difference you can make in an individual's life uh, in the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we are very involved uh, in the Boys and Girls Club, uh, making sure once a month that you go out and you visit with those individuals. You can take that to the next level. Uh, the NCAA Division II has initiative to take a kid to the game. You could do it in this community of take a kid to work. Uh, a lot of you have children, and some of those children's families may be struggling. They may have lost their jobs. Invite that individual over to your home. Give them a good meal. Take them to a movie. Tell them you love them. Those things are priceless. And as you go, go forth in the world, the world is not fair, and it's not going to become fair. 
God put us here on earth for a reason. And you have to believe He did that. We're here to serve each other. Go to family a little bit. You have to take care of your family as well. Uh, when I moved to Texas, I made a promise to my wife and I made a promise to my son that when I came home from work, from 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, whenever it is, before midnight, there's no work with me. There's no computer time. I call it Brady time. And you can do that with your sons and daughters. There's tons of children out there with single parents. So if you happen to be in that situation, you know somebody that their father's away or their mother's away, become adopted parents. I'm going to close back to yourself and being, you have to be selfish, but then you're also going to be unselfish. There's things as a provider in life that you don't think about as service, but it's service to your family, it's service to your grandkids, your great grandkids. And it's, some of your students, you may not think this, but you need to be starting to think about it. It's called life insurance. Life insurance tells your family that you love them and it protects them. If you don't have it, I'm not trying to tell you which you go out here to State Farm or, or New York Life, but that's important to give back. You also can give life insurance the things to organizations that you may not be able to give hundreds of thousands of dollars, but after you pass away, you can go to a good cause. How many of you are organ donors? If you're not, I highly encourage that. Jim may hurt still. You may save Jim's life. Put yourself down as an organ donor. That's also giving back. How many of you give blood? If you don't, Sign up. Blood is thicker than water, and that's true. <coughs> As I leave you today, I want you to think about one thing. Be thankful for what we have and know that you have more than you need. Be thankful for what you have and know you have more than you need and give back to this community. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.